Hey, this is Margaret Brown, and I attended the dialogue, New Student Dialogue, of It's Never Funny and It's Never Okay, a dialogue on rape culture. Um, <clears throat> so, questions to answer. Do you feel like your group achieved a true dialogue? Why or why not? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I do not think that we did because it was just, like, awkward. It was an awkward situation and no one was really, like, talking, getting the ball rolling, so <clears throat> it was just, it was awkward. And the leaders were just kind of, like, hard to follow, but <clears throat> share. Okay, were there active voices in your dialogue? Yes, there were a few. There's like eight voices heard throughout the two hours. Um, so yeah, there were some people who talked. And um, there were also quiet voices who were very reserved. <clears throat> um, which I thought was fine because not everyone should be talking, you know, we need listeners, so I thought that was good, that was fine. What role did you play in your group, and why? Um, I was kind of both, I would, you know, put in my two cents, and then I would listen, so I was just, um, whenever I felt like saying something, I would say it, but then I would be quiet. Why do you think <coughs> dialogue is a component of CU 1000? Um, I'm not, I mean, I guess it um, is a component of CU 1000 because it puts us in a situation with, like, random people talking about things, real-life things that we should be aware of. <coughs> um... I don't really, the question was, do you see dialogue as a useful tool in your university experience? Um, not, I mean, yes, dialogue obviously is important because that's how we talk, if that's what the question is asking. So, yeah. Um, some additional thoughts. <clears throat> it was, um... We didn't start talking about rape until, like, there's 20 minutes left. So, like, the first hour and a half, we were talking about, like, how to have a discussion, which was annoying because we were like, we know how to. And it was just kind of awkward because one of the leaders was hard to follow along with. And then the other one, we found out she was a lesbian who had been victimized by her, I guess, ex-girlfriend. So that was just kind of awkward that, um, and I think that people, like, kind of didn't really say <clears throat> what they wanted to say because they didn't want to, like, hurt her feelings or anything. So people were definitely more reserved when it came to that. Um... But it was just kind of, like I said, it was just kind of awkward. And we were just kind of tired because we were there for two hours. And um, we were just ready to get it over with. But um, overall, I guess why we had to do this was so that um, we can learn or be aware of such things and so that we can learn how to communicate better with strangers and random people. So, um, I mean, I, I think we all probably could have done without it, but since we did it, we did it and it was fine. So... That concludes my talk about um, 
It's Never Funny and It's Never Okay, a dialogue on rape culture.